grand finals it's a best of five but magical starts with a one game up and we are starting on on um on uh, fool's bay to start it off so of course magical and scruffy did play on fool's bay before so maybe they would have picked it up but we're still forcing it on them because we just love fool's bay you know, thank it's you for reminding me yeah it's sometimes we something we see sometimes in strategy games where everyone hates those oh. weird maps but as spectators weird maps are just the best like you want to see something weird happen whereas if you're if your job is to be good at the game you like something that's always the same you know what your opponent's going to do you know what you're going to do and you just want to go around that but i'm really hoping immortal goes around that meta and forces people to out to think differently and always have to have a different plan for every map yeah, an exciting time to play it really depends on the design like it's oh, yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be helped by the fact that the game doesn't rely as much... It doesn't rely very much on some specifics. I don't know. Sorry. Oh, Basically, sure. at the moment, we don't have to worry as much about things like cliffs or things like the specific way that you have the expansions arranged because each side is probably the same economy. It's like it, The economy is relatively symmetric. So yeah, you don't have to worry about... Design goals, right? Yeah, yeah you have to design worry about goals. one side needing two or three times as many expansions as another side. Don't have to worry about making sure that there's the accessibility for it while still being harassable. Don't have to, you don't have to worry about even necessarily each one having the same. Granted, that's because the way the alloy drops work, it's pretty standardized. You don't have to worry about the. I mean, we might have to worry about cliffs once transports are a thing, but there's nothing oh, that jumps up and down cliffs, so cliffs actually exist. Like they are a relevant I, thing. I expect yeah. them. I expect more teleporting units, you know, to jump up and off cliffs that way. Uh, so maybe jumping up up and down cliffs will be more of a thing as well eventually, but we don't need it either, as you said. We don't... Uh, like, the, the, the economy is symmetrical enough that we can really get out there on the map design. If you the reduce the complexity of one thing, you can, uh, you can augment the complexity of something else. So in this game, they're augmenting the complexity of unit design, so unit... Every, well, 15 factions, you know, type of thing. Well, with, 15 uh, sub-factions, but... Yeah, at release. I'm talking about 10 years in the future. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, plan is to, like, the plan is to yeah. add factions, yes. Yeah, so I have like 15 factions with like 8 Immortal each. Probably not. Okay, let's go 5 Immortals each. So you're going to end up with, you know, 200, 200 or so different styles of play. Just because the economy is symmetrical, we're really allowed to go crazy there. And then in the future, and on top of that, we can have really crazy maps because, yeah, the economy is symmetrical. All units interact differently. You just have to find ways to, as long as every single faction has ways to deal with everything, we'll be fine. I think you've mentioned Which they should. today as well. Yeah. As we discussed earlier today. So yeah. it'll absolutely it it looks like it'll be fine. I'm I'm excited to see the variety of maps. I hope there is a I don't know what their plans are for map making. I know they were talking about allowing map making. I but oh, it's definitely. a lot of work, so it, it's yeah. a big part of it. Where do you want map making? Just not custom games. So you want to be able to put triggers like you could in StarCraft One or Warcraft Three. At least not at the map. start. I, they haven't yeah, they haven't said it. Yeah, not that they're. They obviously want that, but that's more of a down the road type thing. Yeah, exactly. Custom games and all that is very, very far down the road, and they're not promising it in any way. Uh, whereas, whereas making map makers a map making tool available is part of their of their goals, as they it was part of the Kickstarter goals that got uh, there, but probably maybe not at launch. But we'll see. Uh, the team at Sunspear still has a lot of great map makers within their team. They have. Uh, probably one of the yeah, best. Yeah, sure, but I want to make maps. Oh, I know for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, eventually. You know, in the meantime, we'll still have some good maps because they have the best map, one of the best map makers from StarCraft 2 on their team as well, so that's going to help quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, maybe community members will have will have access to an early map making tool as well. We're lucky. <laughs> Before giving nice. it out to droves, you know. A good way to test it, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, they'll, they'll put in alpha first and then map making to an alpha and beta, whatever. But right now they're still working on putting in a grid system, which is why we're not going to get new maps for a while, because you don't want to rebuild the maps afterwards to have a grid in. So, putting making a lot of maps already came at the cost of, well, we're going to have to rebuild them a bit in the future. But we have multiple maps. That's nice. I'm actually, yeah, I'm really curious to, if they, what the details are about that, like how that changes things. I guess I just kind of figured it'd be sort of a nav map. But I guess they have to design it around the way the grid is laid out. Yep, basically. Or they have to... Yeah, or they... Yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they might have to, like, move some cliffs around so the grid works on those cliffs or something. Or... Right. Yeah. 
but then I also don't know the technical details, and we do have we have had things like Fool's Bay having stuff underground, which implies that there's some shenanigans of the maps in general from a technical perspective that makes them a bit fragile at the moment. So it might just be they have to literally rebuild the whole thing. Yeah, that's the issue, right? Sometimes you're just building the game and like, okay, we're going to do this part quickly so we can test this other part that we think is more important and then we'll have to rebuild this. It's like, yeah, okay, let's just do that quickly in a day and then we'll have to spend like two weeks re doing it for real later on and reconfigure right. all the stuff we built on top of it. Also, <gasps> other exciting thing is that we're getting an Ajari. We're finally getting a Ajari today. We have That's the one immortal we haven't seen. So I was speaking to Magical uh, like this week. He says the worst matchup in the game right now is really Ajari versus Mallet because of the root. The root makes it really hard to navigate around that. But on the other side, I believe in Magical. Magical finds ways to win. He's up 1-0 one, one oh, as well yeah, on this in right. best of five. So I'm really curious to see how it goes. Well, I'll be up to them to figure out as we are getting into the match. And... Yeah, in the top, playing as a Jari in the blue, it is magical. In the bottom, in the red, it is Scruffy playing as Malath. Ready for Not the our bat. Expand. Magical going for the fast expand, and Scruffy going for the fast, e very fast ether. Yeah, well, you know, you know, our community is pretty tight knit. Like our community is pretty tight knit, so everyone's gonna speak to each other. So maybe Scruffy knows about what Magical finds annoying. So he, getting that early ether might just mean, oh, he wants to go into. Red sisters really, but that doesn't make sense to me that much because you need uh, a base to attack first. Well, not a base, a army army foundation before you can add in those spellcasters. That's yeah, spellcasters aren't going to be up for another like even at the oh. fastest, it takes like five minutes to get dread sisters. I mean, you could, but that just means you have no army and you're going to die really. Oh quickly. yeah, like at the fastest, you're going to want more like seven or eight minutes. And, okay, both going for their expansion. Scruffy going for the... Easier to defend, I'd say, because you already have a tower there. However, it's uh, it's going to mine out much quicker, so you generally want the, the other natural faster. But both work. Both are no not going to be game-ending decisions, generally. <laughs> I still love this grass. Just a white it's piece on it. It's such pretty grass. Yeah. It's so pretty. And we, okay, we it's better zoomed out, but it's still pretty. Yeah, well, I just want to touch grass, you know? That's that's what that's what my friend told me one time when I was playing StarCraft. You know, touch grass, and I just want to do it in a yeah. model. It's perfect. So I went outside and grabbed a clump of grass, and then brought it inside, and I just touch it whenever I feel like I miss it. Yep, just so we can play immortal. Yeah, just pet the grass every once in a while. It's like, see, I'm touching grass. See, Mom, I don't just play video games all day. I touch grass sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm petting my grass right now. Ooh, soul Foundry. Okay, early Soul Foundry. Oh, and a hidden. Like, that Legion Hall is actually really hidden because no one goes up that ramp. <laughs> they did this last time, actually. the second one. Oh, okay. So Yeah, the, the last game we saw in Fool's Bay, that because they had the proxy Legion Hall over here in the west side, and then yeah, they and had this as their second in-base Legion Hall over the side. Okay. Well, see, that's what's interesting. Scruffy scouted that spot that Magical used last time because exactly Magical used it last time. Yeah, so exactly. It's <laughs> like, well, I know you're going to do that. You did that during Winners. So what's interesting here is Magical placed it there to make sure that Scruffy, if he has a normal scouting pattern, he won't see it. And Magical is able to surprise him, like, oh, Scru Scruffy thinks there's a proxy on the map, when there's really not. So mind game over mind game over mind games going on. And okay. Mixed, just sending... I mean, it's, oh, if your God opponent God. expects a deceitful person, the most, the most tricky thing you can do is be honest. Yeah, and this is such a magical thing, the thing he's been developing. And on top of it, he scouts the bone canopy, which will make him very happy to know it's coming. And some harassment yep. also happens, though the Bastion will be able to defend the main base. Yeah, we've been Still. talking about like how harassment is great, but on this map it's just not that effective because of that Bastion coming in just there. You can still kill the, get, kill the Ethers, but Mass Hunters think, weren't too far out. I think it's a trade-off, because we were talking before about how the Naturals are kind of hard to defend. Yep. And I think that the trade-off is that the main is easier to defend, but you have two natural expansions, both of which are fairly difficult to defend. Oh, and separate, yeah. Having them separate like that. You can you can reinforce your ally pretty easily, but still. Oh, Dervish early on. Ooh. This is going to be a full-on harass early game. Dervish versus Frums coming in quickly. Of course, on the question Mag of arguing Sentinels. Oh, definitely. Magical's definitely getting Sentinels. He He's talking about how how much it's easier to defend with that. You want to get a few Zephyrs initially just to defend the main thing. Oh, God. Oh, oh. He wanted to block that. That's... Okay. They did. Yeah. For a Very second, briefly, but they did. 
for what it's worth, Dirt yeah. not gonna get a whole lot of damage. Well, beyond yeah. the mode line, they just killed. I mean, they got they killed the mode line, so that's yeah, they, they don't need more damage than that. Yeah, no, that's enough damage for free. Run away, mission. yeah, run away, don't die. Uh, yeah, the other big advantage here is that he forces. Yeah, I mean, he forces opponents Frums to be there to take care of this instead of him. And now Frums are going out, and he'll come back into Sipari. Magical uh, is question never is, are the Frums going to come back once again? I don't know, because now Sentinels are Magical. on the way. Magical bought themselves a the time. They, sometime, not enough, the Thrums will have a small period where they can deal some damage. Yeah, but the Mass Hunters are coming into natural of Magical. Does he have units to defend there? They have some Zephyrs. But the Zephyr is going for the Frums instead. He'll they... lose. Okay, they're both losing a lot of most here. It's harass after harass for everyone. Uh, going over to Bastion here, the Frums are going to lose a bit of damage. Free Zephyrs can deal with all those Mass Hunters, but not the best. He's going to do his best to take care of it, and... And the time is just about up. The first Sentinel is out. These Thrums cannot stay. The Mass Hunters also go as the Dervish, Zephyrs rather, are able to stop them. That and was just course, a great counterattack from uh, So part oh, of the backline this entire time have taken out both ether extractors for Scruffy. So Scruffy has one extractor worth of income right now. Yeah, I was going to say it was a great trade-off for Scruffy. He did a lot of damage on his opponent's side before losing his runs. Uh, but losing all those ether extractors at the background, that's so much damage that uh, he, he needs to do something about this. Those Sapari have been crazy. And just having so much area to navigate in the back, his Saparis are still alive. He can still come back whenever. <laughs> And the Sentinels are still alive too, so the Thrums really can't do much. Well, they need to Which find makes the angle me wonder. Of that's that's true, that's true. But it's, it's still like, what what's the tech option? Pierce be Red Veil. We're going to Dread Sisters. Scruffy going for the root. Okay, one from dead. The other one's gonna run away. Uh, is it gonna get away as well? It is going to maybe get away. It depends on the focus fire. Oh, uh -oh. It did not work. Oh, he wants to get at least the last one. They might? No, I don't think so. He'll get back to his mass under towers. And at this point, Magical uh, doesn't need to no. chase it. He doesn't need to. He's done enough there. And finally, Sephardis go down. So that's good from, from Scruffy losing those units for, for free on Magical's side. But they did their damage. They weren't needed anymore. And from there, Magical can just relax, get an expansion, go across the map, take out some Pyre, set up for Heaven's... Heaven's Aegis, actually. They are set up for that now. Not that they have the army count for it, but they will. Yeah, Magical. Did Magical take it? Yeah, Magical started his third base just like his opponent. So we're both going for a third base. And. Scruffy's a little ahead on that, actually. They already got four workers on it. Rom's coming back in. There's only two of them. Uh, but they'll get a nice angle before the Sentinels can come back in position. So any damage he gets with these Frams is just a bonus at this point, because Sentinels are out, and it's all about finding the little bits of damage can get him back into this game, as they're both pretty equal, but you want to get all the little advantage that Magical got by killing those Aether Extractors. Especially since now that's slowed down Dreadsister production, slowed down, I mean, not so much the upgrades, the... So there is going to be one more upgrade for the Masked Hunters, for their offering, because of the Red Veil. That yeah, seems to be the worst Scruffy's going with this. Yeah, he didn't. He, that's a good reason to get Red Veil, honestly. It's a big, big difference in those in those attacks. I think it also gives them one range. So even more I, can get into the attack. Yeah, that's... So you, you have that overall as your major advantage. That is your reason for the tech option is just Masked Hunters for days. Oh, more DPS which, and which, I mean, it fits, you know? Scruffy's been going for Masked Zephyrs. It makes sense to go Masked Masked Hunters. It's the same idea, really. Is he finally going to get the last runs? Who it barely survives? Or does it nope, flame out? Nope! Burns to death! Good way to die. Uh, and last one. You have a uh, weird taste in dying. <laughs> it's a good way to die, you know? It's, uh, it's well, hopefully that's... that's it's no, it's an incredibly flame. painful way to die. No, no, and slow, too. It's angel flames. I believe that that's just a peaceful way to go. It just, like, attacks your brain and just, like, explode into pieces, but your brain was already fi fried up. I'm sure it's fine. It's, you know, let's ask Dylan about that. Mm -hmm. I imagine oh, yeah. it's not great, but we could ask. Maybe. Uh. I mean, it's going to turn you to glass, right? So you don't have to think about it. It's instant. Except that we still out last at least 10 seconds, so... What's instant besides that? Yeah, that was that was clearly not instant. That was very slow. <laughs> it's like... Very slow roasting of uh, your wings and barbecuing. Yeah, and really speaking just, of uh... fire, Sharu are going to be coming up very, very, very soon. 
fighting Off against resonance. Oh, perfect counter yeah. to the resonance even before they get up. It was an interesting fight to begin with as both, both the games are really hectic with both of them just attacking each other. And now they're both content just taking their free bases. Magical taking his fourth. They're, they're not really attacking too much each other too strongly. They're just posturing each other against each other. I'm honestly surprised Magical's not sending in a few Sapari here and there to just pick, poke, deal some damage. Yeah, fine. That, it out. I... I do expect Magical to do do that, and the fact that they're not doing that is a curious thing. It's a curious choice. Uh, he, he sees where his opponent's going, I suppose. And yeah, now Scruffy mm -hmm. is feeling confident to attack. He has a few resonance. As you said, the Sharu coming out can be a big difference, but the Sentinel scouted that out. Sentinel was well placed on top of the hill and was able to see that move out happen, so Magical's getting back in position. And then the Sharu on the way. Uh, they won't have to attack. They're gonna intercept. Bit. They don't intercept before the Mass Hunters get up the hill. That's a lot of Mass Hunters. Oh boy, and they're up the hill. And they have the resonance up the hill. And Rain of Blood! Heaven's Aegis is countered to provide the defense to deal with all the well defense on the other side. Scruffy also having to deal with a lot of healing. Safari come through. Nothing's gonna root them down. The resonance are able to do so much damage, though that has been the key tool in this fight. They are, however, no longer going to be here. They go down, the mass hunters remain as they kite quite effectively. But Scruffy losing those resonance means they don't have the damage. As Magical's reinforcements are able to come into the fight. The Sharu Magical's are here! And oh, no. now they're gone! No, no they survived. Okay, they don't quite die yet. Yeah, so the Sharu coming in like a few seconds too late for this. Scruffy really got a big advantage from this fight. But now he's going to lose all his Mass Hunters. He can rebuild them. And he got enough damage on his opponent against the Sharu. He does not get the Sharu again! Oh god. <laughs> Just magical move that Sharu to a tower. Don't let it die. That's 250 ether. You do not have the ether income. That, that not yet. Looks... You almost do. You almost do. But you haven't quite gotten the last ether extractor to really nail it. That fight looks so good for Scruffy to begin with. But in the end, reinforcements from Magical came in at the right time. Behind this, Scruffy taking a fourth face. Not the one with any ether. And that Resident taking, taking down the back line. Ooh, that's a painful one. I think that fight was really determined by the fact that Magical just threw out every single defensive option. It heavens Aegis for the extra shields. They had the Saoshin for the extra healing on the Sapari. And yeah, Rain of Blood helps keep your units alive and helps offering be a little bit cheaper, but it doesn't increase your damage. So ultimately, the numbers just worked out in Magical's favor. Now the Sharu coming in here, got the Ostrikes, taking out the Resonance. Both of them go down. Once again, it's pure Masked Hunter and the Sapari have no trouble dealing with it. A little bit of damage here and there, a little bit of harassment going on at the same time, and that is fine for Magical. Oh, the oh, yeah. resident is at the top of the hill, so at least it's a good position if Magical decides to go for it. But Magical's content with only with only taking out his opponent's fourth as his is going up. That's risky. Healing coming in from the Saoshin. Does help out a little bit. Magical maintains the advantage, takes out the base, and now has solid mining of their own. Scruffy, oh. on the other hand, gonna get caught out. These resonants, they're, well, they're out, out of position. position, but they're so numerous. This Gonna be a real question. Are the roots coming in? Yes, they are! There's that root you were talking about. Troublesome as it is, it may not be enough as Scruffy. It's down to the resonance. The resonance are doing everything they can. They are deployed, they are dealing some damage, but the Sephari just take too many hits to kill. Even with the root, it does not matter. More reinforcements coming in, but the Saushin to heal up, providing that much extra damage, and Scruffy is scrapping their way through here. It yeah, barely taking this army down. It's so close. That rain of blood, even then, wasn't enough. The Ark Mother come in to provide the damage reduction for Magical's forces, and now, again, they force Scruffy to retreat. It's Magical maintaining this army value advantage both by supply and by just raw Aether equivalent value. Man, it's been Full so, it's rebuild on their fight. side. Such a close fight this whole time. It was back and forth and back and forth. And finally, Magical is still forced to pull back. He seems to have one in the efficiency rate for sure, getting out all those resonance. Uh, but at this point, the Red Dread Sisters are out. But Dread Sisters still need the resonance uh, back. A little bit of resonance in the back always helps. It looks oh, like it's not even going to be that, though. It's yeah, pure Mass Hunter Dread Sister? Pure Mass Hunter, pretty much? Yeah. Scruffy, at the very least, oh, the has is out. Like, have something that can deal with just about everything if they play it right. The Ancient is out, that is true. Yeah, Omnivore coming up as well. That's going to deal some damage, makes the party life a little bit harder. 
Well, it just slows it down for just enough for Genus to come back, right? That's all he needs exactly. at this point. Yeah. Uh, Masvidal has, map, has full map control. Scruffy is completing his own base. He needs to do some type of counter attack to get back into this. And here comes four dresses, which will really help in any fight that comes up next. But those mass those Separi are just so quick. They get around everywhere. And they just keep they, harassing. I crazy. think Magical has both the speed and shield upgrades. Oh, definitely. At this point. I mean, they yeah. got the Eye of Aro, so they can get the upgrades, all the Separi upgrades. Oh no! Oh god. One goes down, the other one goes down as well! No Dread Sisters left for Scruffy! To, okay, oh, one Dread Sister, two Dread Sisters left for Scruffy, but none in the front lines. Everything just got rebuilt. Oh, that was such a miss rally. That's so unfortunate for him as behind this magical. Oh, you spent all your ether on that? Let me just get the Ancient now. There's nothing you can do. And I'm curious if Scruffy can actually do anything about this. They are not even trying. They don't think they can. No, I don't think they can either. It's a. Uh... Ancient goes to Magical, gets that 100 fire immediately. That whole now they're able to get down. Heaven Z just once again. So, next fight, Magical can very easily just hold the line for shields. Hey, look at the army value, it's not even that far, but we just know that Magical has the better economy from having that fourth base for longer. And if you look at army compositions, those shards are just so effective. The resonants need to come out for Scruffy, and he only has one. He needs a few more years than that. Wait, oh, what? right, the 15 minute one spawns too! Oh man, Magic's gonna have 300 pyre at the end of this. There's and Scruffy just can't even stop it. I it was. I wonder if Magical's just waiting until the 15 minute mark to even go for it, so they get the second ancient immediately. That's kind of crazy. That's just a lot, a lot of uh, pyre. Yeah, 300 oh, pyre man. just like that. And here come the units. Well, and... okay, this is gonna be a big push from Scruffy. Can he survive against 300 worth of pyre? That's so much added damage to the next fight. And, but that's a lot of units. It all comes down to those Oshreks. Heaven J just comes down. The Oshrek is perfect, attacking all the units. There's so much damage coming down on those. Resonance are sieged up. And here comes... And those siege... Uh, man, what a fight. And he's just going to pull back after doing all that damage. Magical doesn't need to keep going, but Scruffy sure does. And not to mention, another Heaven Z just could be on the way. Magical... Another Ostrike! That is huge! Birthing Storm is coming up. That is going to slow down Magical's forces significantly. But Scruffy simply doesn't have the force behind it to make that count. And now, this is Scruffy's army being wiped out. Trying to make a moving retreat. They just can't move and fire with these forces at any reasonable speed. And Scruffy realizes there is no game here. And Magical takes game one for a 2-0 lead. Okay, what a game. Like, they both played really well. Scruffy getting some advantage here and there, and in the end, the economy was just enough for Magical to get on top, really. It's not just that, to be fair. There was some really good fights for Magico as well. But you know that big push that came in with the Sharu was almost getting shot out? That was so close oh, to Scruffy. Yeah, that was that terrifying. Was... I can't believe that Sharu survived. Oh, man. I can't believe that Sharu survived. We, we want more burning flames everywhere. I don't... I just don't... I... Ugh. Well, anyway, that was... What map does Scruffy want? They want Lost Province. They they want the... Darn. Yeah. Oh, well. We'll go back there. Yep. That's, that's life. We've lost provinces all day. Every day. It's a beautiful map. Just keep losing our provinces. Mm-hmm. I don't know where just, they went. They just keep getting glassed all over the place. Oh, yeah. That 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 would do it. Okay, so whenever Lucidly Awake, you'll see it. The Saoshin heals compared to the Magi. Magi just heals... Uh, constantly and Saoshin heal much much quicker but in a burst type of rate so you need to jump down and they, they heal in a burst that way in case same two teams Ooh, double ether for Orzu Magical Magical one for Mala okay so, we're, so we we're are up on again. yeah this is everyone on their mains everyone yeah. playing their favorites and what happens from here Mala goes to the or Magical goes to the fast expand Scruffy goes for fast double ether. Ooh boy, okay. They are going aggressive. They they're, they want all or nothing on this one. Is it a proxy or an expand? Okay, the teapot sees the, it's a okay, forward it's not Legion hall. the biggest proxy just there. Yeah. It could it could be the soul foundry push, you know, some type of absolver push could do a lot of damage. I here. think it is. I mean the early ether like this, I think it is me magical. Question is, do they it. think it is? Well, not canceling it, right? their expansion, they're not worried about it. They do see it, they know it's up. Well, you shouldn't cancel your expansion. You need to figure out how to defend it with your expansion as much as possible. Good point. Uh, but that, that could be a big order. It's, uh, let's see how Magical deals with this. He's faced this before, either from Scruffy or Santa or anyone else who could have done that but completely proxied. 
Scruffy's playing it a bit longer, a bit of a longer vision. He can expand a bit more safely afterwards with that Legion Hall not proxied. Well, Altar's coming up as well. It's a little bit late. Legion is done. Soul Foundry is going, and Magical would be able to spot it. Because it's not at 145 yet. Hmm. And of course, second, yes. the tower. Well, that's, a very, that's a very smart move to begin with. You want to get that down to as little as possible, especially if you're going for a big push. You want to do the damage in. And Magical at this point is using, going to use his teapot to try and steal the power from his opponent. Or at the very least to see when their opponent's moving out. And teapot. Oh, no. Yep, they see when their opponent's moving out. They know, okay, well, Scruffy's got those Antari. Probably going to get their Absolver for It's not the weirdest timing, though, for it. I think they're a bit late, but not by much. Yeah, they got the they got the soul finder real fast. So what is Magical going for to defend this? It, yeah, biggest Auber push as we said. Last hunter. It might just be some static defense is very useful in these pushes. The issue is that he might just decide to go for the main instead. If you see static defense, you go for the main. And, okay, an early tower as fast as possible as well. Well, if they go for that, they can get early red tithe and use that to maintain their army's value like did heal it keep their army healthy that might work i'm not quite sure it's, it, it would be enough either that or infuse they have just yeah. about enough for infuse okay well here, he's waiting for the absolver smart choice this yeah he still hasn't expanded it okay it. no we're mm. doing proxy today proxy soul foundry in the back lines good way to win and yeah come to units maybe dervish in the back as well yeah, cause, oh yeah, Scruffy has a decent amount of power at this point. Yeah, he might just go for the main. I think he's just going for the main directly. You don't need to take care of the natural. He can go for main. Oof, scouted. Magical going for the counterattack instead. Okay, so this is entirely down to timing. Because Magical has one advantage. They have two They have two town hall structures. Scruffy only has one. Oh, but that Absolver is so powerful. He can get in position. He can do a hell of a good defense. Oh, that's true. And Scruffy has enough, actually has enough alloy to build another Acropolis. Yeah, just going for the main base so far. He has another Soul Foundry on the way to, in the base of Magical, so defending that might be hard. And here comes the Absorbers, sieging up, and he's going to focus fire it, but here come the moats to defend. Oh, I didn't get the moats blocking blocking the shots. Well, sort of blocking the shots, blocking the attention. Prior focus fire. Fighting. Is that going to be enough? Gets rid of the Absolvers, but the moats are still doing some damage. They get kited. Now it's just a question of whether or not this Acropolis dies. Scruffy knows what's up. They know they have to rebuild an Acropolis or build an Acropolis before this one goes down. Yep. Uh, but behind us, is he going to send his army forward or is he going to keep attacking? Does he want to take care of his opponent's base? And okay, there's an Omnivore already. Om Omnivore is powerful, but not as powerful as a pillar coming down quickly. And the Thrums are in. Oh, that's how he wanted to deal oh, with it. Oh, this is huge. Magical getting a huge advantage off the Thrums. They are taking out the the ether out or ethering him as well but there is only this one last grove heart left the thrums should be able to take out the absolvers so it's still a position that magical can win from that's course, what magical question, is going for that is what they're going for but then the question is the rebuild on the rebuild what is scruffy going to go for are they going to go for an acropolis are they just going to go for more units in the back lines of course they have the back line soul foundry but the Zentari coming in to defend does mean Magical does not get a free Acropolis kill. Yeah, and he will be going for... He does have the Reliquary coming up, so with that he's going to be able to make some more units. Uh, but yeah, at least he can build some Dervish from his Proxy Soul Foundry. It's not going to be discovered so fast. Or Absolvers. Just go straight for the back lines with Absolvers. And well, if the Absolvers are... Like, if the Frums are all in his base, at least he can defend that way. And yeah, the, they are coming in his base pretty soon. There you go. The Frums want to intercept anything they can. You can take out some moats, you can stop them from rebuilding. You can take, take out some Zentari to just take out Zentari, I guess. You, I guess no other ground units to defend. So, yeah, that's kind of what you need. Main thing, of course, is the moats and possibly the Acropolis. Again, nothing currently oh, wow, shoots up. Long. They're All the Zephyrs coming in are way at the front. And there's nothing being rebuilt, so it's possible this Acropolis could go down. That is the key thing. Zolvers around the right. back lines for Magical are well, presenting the coming in. And there's no... Okay, the second base is up for Magical at this point. So, they both got it. They both have something. The Frums are too far to really come defend this against those two Absolvers. Absolvers, where are they going for? Are they going for... Uh, the Frums are... No, don't retarget! Don't retarget Magical! No, oh, the Thrums! Okay, to be fair, that's made up the worst thing in the world because... The, yeah, that no, he mean... gets any damage. I'm not sure he yeah. would have been able to kill it. Like, he gets some damage. And at the top, what's going on in Magical's base in, the, in his main? 
Well, the Absolvers on the back lines, taking out the Mass Hunters one by one. Zephyr is able to take out the expansion at the bottom. The Thrums are able to stop them, but again, this Acropolis survives. And there's one Absolver that did go down for Scruffy in the, the top of his base, so yeah, there come the Mass Hunters. Okay, perfect split there, making sure that only one of them gets shot at a time. Great splits there, and uh, yeah, the Thrums coming back to defend. Natural goes down again, there's only the mains for both sides, this is just so dangerous. Both, well, the mains for both sides, but Magical, they have full health. Yeah. So even and in a direct base race, Magical has the advantage coming in, on top of the fact that they have they kind of have yes. the unit type advantage. They have the unit type advantage. Not kind of. Oh, they yeah. really do. The Zephyrs are the only things that can stop them. And there are more and more Zephyrs being built, but those are very Aether expensive. They're, they're expensive. And with only one Aether extractor, there's not a lot that Scruffy can build before they have to just either alloy sink it with Zentari or build nothing. And does he want to go back to his main base to defend that against a possible from? Probably not. He can just go for the next for the kill and Try and trade out as well as he can. That's that's always the solution. Is he still building stuff from the Soul Foundry in the proxy? In they the, in are the not in there. Nope, neither. Okay. okay. They don't have the ether. Yeah. Well, that could have been the next push, right? Just go for that instead. Instead, he's just going to be attacked by all those frums. And this time, uh, Scruffy does not have another base, so magical kills that he's he's gonna, just going to win that point. Oh, sending in a teapot to see exactly what's up, and there's nothing there. Magical's going to be happy to see that. Scruffy could build another base in an emergency with moats just to be in the safe side, but not quickly, no. Like, they, they can't build it up to have a whole lot of, of they don't have enough defensive either. power. Maybe they they don't. They have the alloy. Oh, they don't have the alloy! They don't have the alloy! They have to wait for the Bastion to come up, and the that's okay, not going to be enough. Just made enough. Just oh, they did. Enough. Yes, okay. They say they do have the backup expansion. It's not that healthy, so Magical will probably clue in, oh, they probably went for the natural, and then they'll go and hunt the natural once they realize they haven't just won the game. Yeah, good thing the Bastion's still there. That, uh, not the Bastion. Yeah, the Bastion's still there to give some energy. And there comes Killer the final drops. push. We do have Proxy Dervish coming around the back to help get rid of the Mass Hunters, but it gets sniped. There's nothing holding it. Pillar is still there. Yeah, he's pulling back out the weaker Zephyrs. He even has Wind Step, which helps heal up the shields at the same time. And those Mass Hunters are in for the fight of their lives as they're trying to get in there, but... It seems like Starfy just has barely enough to win this fight. At least he can go back to, to the healing power of the tower. Plus, of the snapshots also helps quite a bit. There's no healing coming in for Scruffy's side and loses one of those Zephyrs. Okay, the only thing left are the one. Zephyrs. Five Zephyrs remain. Four Zephyrs are following afterwards. Check back in the natural expansion. It is not being scouted out yet, so the Thrums are going to have to and work it out for them as they in. fall back to help get rid of the Zephyrs. The if Magical wins, giving... they do still have a position to play from. While Scruffy has basically no economy, apart from their Bastion. Yeah, that, that pillar also gives so much energy, but at this point, uh, the front, he's focused on down the Frums, which is not the bad, the worst idea. But those Mass Hunters still have a decent amount of power, and they're attacking forward. He wants to stay in the range of that tower as it gives extra DPS, and he goes for it. Moving forward to the Frums, but Frums move back. It's only three Zephyrs left. What's he going to do now? Two Zephyrs remain. The Moats joining in the fight. As the last two Zephyrs come through. Zolvers and, Zent or, Zolvers and Zephyrs from oh, no. the... Ah! That was, they have changed the name a long time ago. Zolvers and Dervish coming in the backside. That will be able to threaten a bit, but they don't shoot up, so the Thrums just don't care. Yeah, if it, they had been in the fight from the start, it could have made such a big difference, but in the end, unfortunately, it seems like the Thrums will be the, the end of him. He's trying to reinforce with what he has, but none of these shoot up again. Now the Thrums can go right back around the side and start poking down this natural. Or, you know, whatever else tries to come in to stop Magical from building themselves back up. Yeah, Scruffy's still running around trying to figure out did, did Magical expand somewhere else, and so far, no. And they're both actually sending teapots around to figure that out. Oh, yeah, you can see Magical's like, okay, I know they expanded. Where did they expand? Oh, the natural? Oh. Darn. Okay. Well, okay, then. <laughs> I mean, double-check the rest of it. There could be a third. Like, for all you know, Scruffy, yeah. yeah, they could have gone for several secret oh, expansions man. in case. But no, Scruffy realizes they're, the jig is up. Magical takes the game, Scruffy throws in the towel, and that is our tournament. Yeah. As so Magical goes for the tournament, only losing one game to Scruffy when uh, Scruffy was playing his off-race Mala, actually. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Magical was also playing his off-race, so <laughs> it's been interesting. It's been a fun tournament. We've had a, that a was... lot of fun with gun games. Yeah, that was so cool. I, I really appreciate just the shenanigans 
that last oh, that was such a cool match that last match oh yeah. and thank you both of you for setting scruffy. that up every single every single game today was scruffy we didn't scare yeah. anything that wasn't scruffy today oh yeah we did we evolved from start to finish and yeah i, I didn't think was... we would necessarily i was like oh well santa's gonna have a good chance no scruffy 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 everywhere it's like okay well. yeah the, well that i mean they did really well they got second place magical gets first out of of course in the first tournament and gets third yeah so yeah thank you all of you for joining up and if you do want to join there is a link to the discord in the stream chat for the gates part discord just to be clear it's the their discord so you can join that and then if you have a key you which i was giving away throughout the stream you can and we'll give away in future streams and other people giving away in their own streams you can play the game and of course you can join the tournament because you might as well it's fun so with that we are pretty well finished so thank you to the well, thank you to the players for joining and making this tournament happen thank you to Simus for TOing and also making this tournament happen Thanks, ZK, for doing the co-commentating. Really appreciate that. And as always, thank you all of you for watching. As always, we will have more tournaments every week on Saturdays. It's basically the same time. Just about 10 a.m. Pacific on Saturdays is when we have the Break the Game weekly tournaments. As well, Santa is actually hosting a tournament on Wednesday at 4, Pacific, 4 p.m. Pacific. The Walter Mode Tournament, which is a special rules tournament where you cannot, well, this week, you cannot build tier one units. It's every week we'll have a different weird rule. This week is no tier one units. Nothing that comes out of a Legion Hall or out of a Altar of the Worthy. And for the Mala players out there, the Incubator counts as tier one because it replaces the Underspine, which does come out of an Altar of the Worthy. So that's Wednesday. Saturday is Break the Game Weekly. And until then, have a good night, everyone.